Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Discovering the Joys of Homeschooling. I'm Stephanie Rose. I'm the community manager, and today I'm joined by Judy. Judy, welcome. And two brand new homeschoolers last year. We're going to be talking all about, you know, how you transition from um, not homeschooling to a pandemic homeschooler to um, a, a veteran homeschooler, as you two now are, <laughs> and why they chose to move on. We're going to be talking about how families are embracing the choice of homeschooling and continuing to do it. So thank you everyone for joining. Judy, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. I am a veteran. I'm a homeschooling mom, three kids, uh, graduated having used sunlight. And now we have a second generation of homeschoolers in our family using sunlight. I'm also sunlight's marketing sales manager. Welcome. And Katie, welcome. Hi. So I'm Katie. I have um, two school-aged kids, ages eight and nine, and I have a two-year-old toddler who livens our days up. <laughs> um, right last year, we started with core B and we're going to be going into core C for next year. And um, it's it's been an adventure. It sounds better than utter chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, welcome. And Nicole, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yes, I am Nicole and I am teaching three school aged kids. I have two sons that are 10 and eight and a daughter who is six. Uh, we all worked together and did core B this year and uh, we'll be moving on to core C for the younger ones next year and D and E for my oldest. And uh, besides a few bumps in the road at the beginning, we really learned to embrace like learning together and getting to know one another more and just learning together. It was really a fun experience. Great. I'm Stephanie Rose. I'm the community manager. I'm so happy that you two joined us. As you can, as you know, from just listening to their introductions, their years were crazy. Homeschooling with a toddler and homeschooling three children is no easy feat. And they decided to continue. So let's talk a little bit about that. Judy, do you want to get started? Sure. So Katie, why don't you tell us just a little bit of your story of how you started homeschooling? Why did you start homeschooling? Well, for me, it actually, I officially started this year, but I had discovered Sunlight back when my older two were in preschool age. And um, I loved the books. So I bought the books because I'm a bookaholic and, you know, why not? And, but life happened and life continued happening. And we ended up putting them in a preschool program. And from there, they did well. So we put them in kindergarten and then they, my oldest moved to first grade and then second grade. And my middle one was in first grade and then COVID happened. <laughs> so in and amongst, I, I have to say, we had the most amazing public school teachers we could have ever asked for. Um, our journey with the public school, it had its ups and downs, but really it was a good, we had a good experience with it. The trouble started when my oldest started having problems with math and she was struggling and I went to the school. We were trying to get her help set up. There was some miscommunications. There was, um, they, they didn't always want to do what I thought they should be doing. And then COVID hit and my nine-year-old now lost her entire second grade year of math. Just the entire year was gone. And I told my husband, I'm like, even if they go back to normal in the fall, we can't put her back in. It would be unfair. She would fall through the cracks. It would not be good. So I got online and I remembered sunlight and I found the horizons to math and I ordered it that March. I threw out what the school sent home and we started in horizons to then. And I just moved my first grader up with her. We were all doing it together and I took advantage of the 30% off sale uh, for your 30 year anniversary. And we jumped in Pennsylvania. You can start homeschooling uh, July 1st to count days. So July 1st, we jumped right in and here we are. <laughs> Excellent. How about your story, Nicole? Well, um, mine's a little different. So all of my kids were actually in public school uh, before we decided to homeschool. And um, I had considered homeschooling because of my middle child. 
he had some uh, struggles in different areas, especially with reading. Um, he really kind of fell behind in some areas and wasn't really getting the help that we felt he needed um, in that sense at school. And I could only do as much as I could from home. I was working at the time. And um, then I noticed math was becoming a struggle and trying to just get him to sit down and do the things after I got home from work. And we had to hurry and get things done to get to extracurriculars. It was really becoming hard. Um, and then it really became uh, something we were going to do when things also started to happen uh, with other kids at school where we were getting calls about this was happening at school or this kid did this to him. And it became more of um, a situation where there were bullying things happening with him. So uh, the pandemic happened and we found out everything was gonna go virtual. And I know my kids and I know that them sitting in front of a computer all day is not gonna be productive. Um, it was not going to be a way that they would learn. My oldest, I feel, would be able to handle it, but the younger two would get distracted. And so I said, well, what about jumping into homeschool? We've thought about it. What about doing it? And I had a friend who she, the uh, semester before, had started homeschooling her kids with sunlight and told me how much she really loved it and saw a difference in her child who struggled with reading. And I said, well, how about it? I said, we might as well jump in and see how it works out for our family. And here we are. <laughs> Those are all, you know, both great uh, stories on how you got there, but how was the adjustment? How did it, how did you adjust to homeschooling? There is an adjustment period. We talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. If you had a child in public school, Judy, what is it? Um, for every year you've been in public school, you should wait a week or a month. I can't remember exactly what a week it's typically a week or two for every year. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for the longer they've been in public school, probably the bigger adjustment, but let's talk a little bit specifically about your adjustment period. Nicole, why don't you start this one? Okay. Um, so I think for myself, it probably took me about a month to get on track with everything. And I think it was mostly because I had three kids doing all different like I consider it my morning work, all of their math and their language arts and everything were different. And all of them had questions at the exact same time. <laughs> they would all come to me with some kind of question and mommy, 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 I'd be helping one and they're in my ear and I would become flustered. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know how this is gonna work out. <laughs> uh, but progressively, I figured out a way that I could make things for the older two, because some of their schedule was a little bit different. It was close to the same things, but a little different to where we just tweaked some of their stuff to where it was the same, and they could work off of each other a little more. And then I made a very strict rule that if I am helping one child, you have to wait until I am done with that thing, that topic, and then somebody else can come and ask me their question. And that seemed to help myself keep my sanity a little more mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I feel like it took myself about a month to, to kind of get on a good swing of things how about the kiddos how long did were they just happy to be with you well my youngest my daughter yes she was all about it she was excited to be learning with her brothers and excited that she get, got to be a part of everything that they were doing my oldest he took maybe about a week. Um, he's pretty easygoing and bendable. My middle, he, it took him probably about two months to be on board with it because it didn't make sense as much to him that why are we learning at home? Like we're not supposed to be doing homework at home and <laughs> all the, all the excuses and all the things. And, but once he figured it out, he started doing so much on his own. It, it really kind of flourished in him the most, I think now that we're at the end of the year, but Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. How about you, Katie? How was the adjustment? Well, for me, my initial thought was I can't do any worse than the distance learning at the end of the previous year. Um, kudos to all the teachers and the schools. You know, th they were flung through a loop, as were the rest of us. But I also live in an area that has very poor internet. Mm -hmm. So I can't even have my kids online at the same time. Um, my plan for this was to go to my sister's house so I would have good enough internet to join the Zoom meeting. <laughs> so I knew virtual learning was not going to be 
anything we could do. So um, with the distance learning, it was such a disaster on so many levels. My kids did not do well with it. Um, I ended up throwing out a lot of what they sent home. And probably because I started with the Horizons 2 last March during all the shutdowns, it gave us a chance to like ease in. Um, I also have, I actually went to school and was a professional nanny. I, I probably should have put that in my bio. But um, <laughs> so I've been trained with play learning. So I drew a lot on that experience for how I wanted to homeschool the kids. The hardest part for me was schedule. Um, in my mind, we should start at eight o'clock mm -hmm. and work. And that failed. <laughs> we learned that if I could just let my daughter get up and do her math at six in the morning when she was freshest, she would fly right through it. If I waited until in my head school should start, it was a fight. So part of it was getting out of my own head of what school should look like was probably my biggest adjustment. Um, for the kids, Nolan was just so excited that he didn't have to get up for the bus. <laughs> had, um, they both liked that we were done by noon most days. I mean, my kids were third and second grade ages. So we were done by noon most days and they liked that. So they adjusted fairly quickly to it all, but our schedules were so thrown off by the distance learning anyway. Anything new was, I don't, I think we just kind of all just jumped in with it. Great. So it sounds like you guys really have kind of adapted to having a homeschooling mindset mm -hmm. um, as opposed to trying to bring public school home to your dining room. Mm -hmm. What do you think is now your biggest challenge with respect to homeschooling? Um, do you feel like you've got it all conquered or are there things that you still, <laughs> you still find to be a challenge that were a challenge even during that transition period? Nicole? Um, yeah, so I would say that, I don't know that it's, well, yes, it's a challenge. I feel like personally, I don't know that, I'm trying to figure out how to word this, I want to be sure that my kids are learning everything they need to learn and kept being where everybody else is for their age and not feeling that I have a direct gauge on whether or not that's where they are is frightens me. It kind of makes me a little nervous, but um, that's kind of where I feel we're struggling now is are they, I know with math, because with our, the, I use math, you see with the math, you see stuff, their grades are good on all their tests, all their exams and things like that. But then where I have to kind of self-grade with the language arts things to where it's kind of like my opinion, how well they did, I, I kind of um, struggle with myself is my opinion, um, not so mom opinion and more like, yeah, this is right. Like they're doing, they're where they're supposed to be here. It's not too many run on sentences or a thousand sentences per paragraph. <laughs> but just making sure that they're where they're supposed to be is kind of where I feel we're struggling right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it's not even really a struggle. It's more of my self feeling and making sure I'm doing my job right. And that is so, so very normal. All of us struggled with homeschool mom doubt and homeschool mom guilt. And I mean, whatever label you want to put on it, but looking back on it, mm -hmm. trust your gut because you know those kids way better than anyone else does. For Very sure. Good. How about you, Katie? Uh, for me, and you're going to laugh, it's writing in pen. And <laughs> the, reason, <laughs> the reason I say writing in pen is I am very schedule oriented and I hate writing in pencil because it smears and it smudges. So I write in pen, but that is the equivalent to carving it in stone. Mm -hmm. And if it is written in pen, I can't change it. Um, so last year, my biggest mistake was my, my biggest moment of brilliance and my biggest mistake was I was going to schedule us off all the days that my husband was off because I learned quick. If I'm trying to homeschool with him home as well, it became a too many cooks in the kitchen situation. 
So if he was off, we were off, Mm -hmm. but Christmas hit and then he didn't have any more scheduled days off. So we went from Christmas until we finished in April with no breaks Oh my! (laughs) because I had written it in pen and now we had to do it. (laughs) So I still wrote everything in pen this year, but I invested in whiteout. (laughs) There you go. But, um, flexibility is really probably one of my biggest struggles. What saved us last year was we were done by noon. So we still had a lot of free time Mm. to play. Um, And I have a large group of homeschool mom friends who are like, okay, get out of your head. You've, you've got to stop. (laughs) (laughs) So, but yeah, flexibility is probably my biggest struggle. And that's going to be an ongoing one. Right. (laughs) And that community will be a great resource for you. Absolutely. Also erasable pens. Oh, they have them? I I invested in erasable pens. It's the best thing ever. (laughs) So I'll write in my planner and I'm like, "Mm, nope, I don't want to, that's not something. But I erased it. (laughs) So yes. And you're, you're right. Flexibility is oftentimes something that as moms in general, we forget to be flexible. You know, we have a plan, we have, we have everything in our brains, but then we have three, two, seven tiny beings who are going to change exactly what we had in our brains. So uh, I think flexibility is probably very common as well that people are struggle with. Um, So you guys both decided to continue with sunlight. Can you tell me a little bit about why you continue with sunlight and maybe like what helped you make those decisions? Yeah, I can go. Um, so I think the main reason I chose to go with sunlight again is, uh, scheduling for sure. Uh, since everything was scheduled out for me and really, I just had to cater it to our calendar schedule. It just made my life so much easier. Um, I think I made my life harder because I had my sunlight curriculum stuff all planned out. And then I wrote all those same things in a planner. And then I also put all those same things on individual planners for the kids every week. So like I was tripling up on everything and it was taking me like half a day every weekend to get myself all put together. And then by midway through the year, I said, well, why am I doing this? Like they'd already did it all for me. Like, why am I adding more to my load? Um, And once I kind of figured that out, I had so much more time to just kind of ingest what they were going to learn. So I I was more prepared for it. So I didn't always have to be going back to reference and reading this when they were asking me a question and I could be more prepared on my end. Um, But uh, I also really wanted to stick with sunlight because my son, my middle child's reading had improved so much um, to the end of the year. Um, from where he had started to where he was at the end of the year was so much different than I, I told myself, I said, something is working. What they're providing for me is working. The books that they are providing, he's reading, he's interested in them. Um, I will say that at the beginning, we do Sunday school. We always have done Bible lessons and everything. And it was kind of a push for him. But the Bible story book became his favorite book. He flew through it once he really got into it and read it. So it even encouraged his love for the Bible stories and for the Bible in general. So I was sold. (laughs) Awesome. Yes. The books. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, that's totally what sold it for us. Um, And the topics that the books picked, because Nolan, my uh, eight-year-old, he did the second grade readers last year. So he did the storybook Bible. Um. But Shaylin, my nine-year-old, she did the third grade readers last year. And she read the house on, I'm going to butcher this, Walneska Street. And I was not a mom who pre-read. My theory was you guys did the work for me. (laughs) So I did not do a lot of pre-reading. And she's asking me questions. She's like, mom, what is this? And it hit me. Oh my goodness. This book is about the Jewish purge in Russia during World War I. And you know, it's the children's version of Fiddler on the Roof, basically. And it got us to talk about it. And um, she's like, well, they were just bullies. I said, yeah. And she's like, 
So these people came and they told them they couldn't be bullies anymore. I'm like, eventually. <laughs> and she's like, mom, why do they do this? She's like, people are still bullies. And it opened up so many conversations. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it ever would have occurred to me to have opened up the subject of that of Walneska Street at that age, but it was done so age appropriately. And she loved the book. And um, both kids can tell you, oh, this book was their favorite. And they loved this book. Uh, Nolan giggled through Amelia Bedelia the mm -hmm. entire way through. I've never heard that kid giggle so much <laughs> through a book. Um, and then with the read alouds, we read Mr. Popper's Penguins this year. And then they watched the movie mm -hmm. and they told me the book was so much better. <laughs> and that just warmed my heart because again, I'm a bookaholic. Give me all the books. <laughs> so between the, between you guys having the schedule written out, making that so simple to open and go, and then just the books and the meat of the books, just, yeah, I, give me all the books. <laughs> <laughs> So did you guys um, have opportunity, this is not a trick question, it's okay if you didn't, but um, did you have opportunity to take advantage of any of our community resources, like our connections on Facebook or in the app? And if you did, do you feel like that resource was helpful? So how so? So I uh, joined the Sunlight Connections on Facebook first and the Sunlight Moms, um, which is, is and isn't connected all at the same time, I guess. Um, they were really helpful. It was a lot of, yes, I'm, I'm dealing with this too. Um, I even asked, I asked questions about Sunlight itself, but I also asked questions about, okay, I have an 18 month old who is dancing on the table while the other two are doing their math. And it's very distracting. What do I do? <laughs> and there were other moms who have toddlers and have had toddlers for years while homeschooling for years who are able to say, hey, get a busy box, toys just for homeschool time. And gave me ideas of what to put in said busy box. And it was just, it was great. Um, and then when the app came out, I signed up for the app and um, I'm one of the ones who kind of wanted to get off Facebook a little bit because it, it gets sucks you in on your time so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved to the app trying to be more intentional about my phone time. Mm -hmm. And that's been great. Uh, the moms there, as more and more people are coming over, the conversation's getting bigger and um, having the blog right there is really nice. Um, but no, they've been so helpful. Just a lot of, oh yeah, we've been there. We've done that. It's okay. You're going to live. <laughs> that was great. Good. How about you, Nicole? Yeah, um, I kind of the same way. I had joined the connections group on Facebook and really used it as a tool to ask search for questions that I had to be like, am I crazy? Like, am I the only person who's experiencing this? Or will this subside? Like, will things get a little different? And even, I think it helped me become, here's the cool word, flexible a lot more <laughs> because I really, in my mindset, when we first started, I was the one who thought that we were gonna sit down and it was gonna be like a public school situation to where we're gonna sit at the table, we're gonna do our work, everybody's gonna stay here and we're gonna stay, to this timeline and we're not going to deviate from that but when I saw so much frustration in my kids and then I read more from the connections groups and the other mom groups and everything and they said well if you have one kid who wants to go sit on the couch and do that and they're happier there let them go do it or let them move to a different room or however it may be or if you need to get up for a second and walk away and then come back do it it's okay like you're not failing it's just part of the whole process like it's okay but I also went through the part where I was kind of over Facebook and moved over to the app and love that I can because that's really the only reason I was using Facebook was to get on there to look for homeschool stuff and sunlight information so when you guys had the app available and I could get that same information on there it was 
it was great for me. So I, I just love that you could have that sense of community with people using the same thing you're using. And typically somebody else has had the same question that you have, and it can be answered somewhere on there. It just made me feel a lot better about those things. So yeah, I used it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's something that we, um, when we're doing things like this, we're like, what can we make that's new? Because, you know, we've talked about a lot of the same things. So I like being able to say, here is the resource we did on this, or here is information. I think there's a lot of the same issues that people have every mm -hmm. time they, you know, in different parts of their life in different seasons of their homeschool. So yeah. it's a great, it's great that you are using them that way. Yeah. Yay, I love hearing <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, so you talked about why you love the curriculum or why it was helpful or why you picked sunlight, but what are you most looking forward to as you pick sunlight to continue homeschooling? What are you most looking forward to? Um, so I am excited about the books and I think we've talked about the books quite a few times, but there are some of the books that we got for our next year that I want to personally read that I was pretty excited about. Um, like, especially, I don't know what they're, what the grouping of them are called, but we read George Mueller and it seems to be that there's a lot more of those type of books. Yeah. And there are a few of those missionary pe uh, people who've gone out and did mission things and whatever that I have books of, but I've never read those books. So I'm excited personally to go through those with my kids. And in particular, George Mueller, my kids were so upset that we were reading a book that was supposed to be about a Christian who was doing such bad things. And then when it finally got to the point to where like his life turned around, they, it clicked in their head, like, oh, mm -hmm. like not everybody who's a Christian is perfect. Actually, none of us are like, everybody mm -hmm. makes mistakes and look at all the cool things he's doing with his life now. So the books, again, I think Katie had said it too, has opened up so many conversations mm -hmm. and have allowed them to feel comfortable asking those questions and kind of knowing that you can ask questions if you're confused about something or don't understand it like this is what it's all about we're reading this together we're doing this together um so i'm excited to jump into the new books and um we my oldest will have a lap book for his hbl and i'm excited to see what that looks like too because i was going through the box and everything was so colorful but <laughs> i'm excited for all the new stuff Absolutely. How about you, Katie? What are you looking forward to the most? The hands-on history projects. Mm -hmm. um, we bought them for B and we adored them. Shaylin, my nine-year-old, she's very crafty. She loves art. So this was a great way to pull history into something she really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And both kids, Dolan and Shay, they both really, really got involved and into it. And um when we got our sunlight boxes for next year, they immediately found the hands-on history crafts and opened up those boxes and they're pulling them out and like, guys, slow down. We don't want to lose pieces. <laughs> don't be opening the plastic bags, just wait. But Nolan is like, mom, we're making a samurai helmet. And <laughs> Kaylin's all about the Viking jewel box that we're going to be making. And um, my husband wants to help make the Wrights brother flyer. <laughs> So even the husband, you know, even my husband gets in on this. So, but the crafts are so great. Um, they really bring the history to life. And for Pennsylvania, again, we have to have an evaluation at the end of the year. So my kids brought out these crafts to show the evaluator and they're telling them all about the Roman chariot and the Trojan horse. And they were able to bring back details I had forgotten mm -hmm. and just having them really help like connect it all together. That is great. I am so appreciative that you two were able to share your stories today. And um, I hope, I know that other moms who might be on the fence about a second year and dads, um, or maybe even their first year, this will definitely help them um, as they're making decisions. So thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. It was fun. Yes. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.